Hello there, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. I appreciate you checking out this video on MSP lead generation. This is the audio version of the MSP lead generation guide uh, for 2023 um, that we have on our website. If, if you wanna get the, the whole version of the, the entire guide, you can certainly go to simpleselling.co um, and find MSP lead generation um, at the very top on the left side of the navigation. Uh, at least as of uh, as of November uh, 2022, that's where it is. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through, um, I'm going to make a number of videos, uh, ideally one video, I think, per chapter. There's four chapters in the guide all together. And hopefully you get some value from just hearing the audio uh, version. I figured uh, maybe some of you uh, are pretty busy running your MSP. Uh, and so, uh, you know, having the audio or video version while you're doing other things um, at home, in the gym, on the commute, um, that maybe that helps out. All right. So without further ado, I'm just going to move forward here into chapter one of the guide. Um, and uh, I'll just start off just with a very, you know, quick introduction of myself uh, in case we haven't met. Uh, my name is Derek Marin. I'm president of this company's uh, Simple Selling. And we basically provide managed warm pipeline generation services for small to medium sized MSPs. Um, so we build, execute and manage the process that turns cold MSP prospects into higher converting opportunities. Um, and we're focused mainly on helping MSPs with, with getting more agreements and managed services or uh, co-mits, co-managed services. Um, and I've been doing this for about four years now. Um, and now we're, we're working with, with numerous MSPs um, across the, uh, the United States. Um, this is just an example of uh, one of our uh, partners, customers, um, Tom um, from NSI, New England Systems, uh, based over in Connecticut. Um, we've been working with him pretty much since the beginning. Um, I was introduced to Tom, um, and that's how I learned about uh, what an MSP is, what your services are to the broader um, SMB um, communities. Um, and more importantly, just about, you know, just I learned a lot about the, the challenge around lead generation. Um, and so, um, you know, was pulling my hair, trying to crack the code uh, for NSI at the very beginning. It was very difficult. Um, and, uh, but eventually we came around to coming up with a repeatable process that we are, are now executing uh, continuously now for many MSPs. So that's what this guide is about. It's just to uncover a little bit of our process. So hopefully if you're an MSP, um, it helps It helps you. So um, who is this guide for specifically? I think I just touched on it. Well, it's for basically three types of um, individuals. Primarily, um, you know, we typically work with MSP that are owner-led, owner-led sales. And so I'm putting at the very top, you know, if you're a president CEO of an MSP, um, you know, you're definitely going to um, hopefully get some value from, from the process that we're going to go through. Also, if you're a VP of sales or a director of business development, uh, sales manager, if you will, um, or, you know, an account manager who's also working with existing customers, like this could also be helpful for you or an SDR or is what we call sales development rep. If you're just doing the prospecting portion, um, this guide could also be helpful as we get into to that part of our, our process. In addition, if you're on the marketing side of things, or maybe a, a, mid, a mid-size um, MSP, um, then you know you may also may benefit uh, a lot from from what we talk about. So, um, so yeah, and you know, like I mentioned, there's four chapters in this uh, in this guide. Um, chapter one, which we'll go over today, is revenue uh, goal setting. Um, chapter two will be the next video, which is will be about differentiating, distinguishing your MSP's message. Um, our third chapter is on how to actually have conversations and connect with qualified sales qualified leads. Um, and the final chapter is on to nurture um, those leads long term so that they, they warm up. So um, let's get into chapter one, revenue goal setting. So uh, I'm just going to go through and question by question here. And hopefully it's a, it's a, it, it, you know, it, this dialogue or this question helps as you're thinking about um, setting goals. So. Um, you know, I think, I think the goal setting, you know, before diving in just to the, to the example, a hypothetical question here for an MSP, I think taking a step back, uh, this, this has been something that has surprised me. Um, in many of my initial conversations with an MSP is like, uh, you know, we're talking because they want help with lead generation. They want help with marketing. 
Um, but when I asked them, you know, all right, so what are you specifically looking to achieve from a sales point of view or new customer perspective? And what is sort of the timeline associated with that? Very rarely do does someone have a specific answer. It's typically, you know, we just want to grow. And I think, um, you know, part of the reason that is the answer is because this process around lead generation and, and proactive growth or organic growth, it's kind of new to many of the MSPs, at least the ones that we work with. Um, and so, um, you know, I, if, if, if that's how you feel right now, um, going through some of these questions, just, just totally get that, um, you know, understand that you're, you're totally normal in the sense that many MSPs that just get to the point where you're at, which is where you've been very successful with um, running your business and having, uh, you know, great success with existing customers and referrals. You know, this next phase, it's a different, it's a different stage, different phase. Uh, and you know it's time to start working a process into uh, into it. And so we start with like, what are we actually trying to achieve? Okay, so um, the first question that I ask in the, this chapter is, by how much do you want annual revenue to grow for your MSP in three years? Right? By how much do you want annual revenue to, for your MSP to grow in three years? Um, so for example, you know maybe in three years you want to grow MRR by um, let's say a million dollars. Um, you wanna grow MR by that much in three years. So, you know, there isn't, you know, obviously there isn't a, a technical, a wrong, a right or wrong answer here, but you know, it's, it's important that we have some number um, because whether you work, whether you hire someone or you work with a vendor, you know, we're gonna need to understand what will make you happy um, and so that we can, and, and understand why, you know, why is that your target? If you're just, you know, putting your finger up in the air, um, or if you have a very concrete, I know, you know, timeline for say you want to sell your MSP by a certain point, or maybe you want to retire, or maybe, you know, who knows, like, you know what you need, um, and why you need that. So it's important that that be communicated to the, to the people responsible for sales and marketing and lead generation. Okay. So. Let's move on to the to the to the next question here, and we'll say, okay, so what percentage of that revenue growth um, do you expect from new customers versus existing customers? Very important distinction. Um, so, with that hypothetical example of you growing um, MR, you know, annual revenue <clears throat> um, by uh, by a million dollars in three years, um, let's say that 75% is expected from new customers, then that would mean um, 75%, uh, of course, times a million would be 750K um, is what represents your sales goal for new business. And of course, the other 250K is from upgrading projects or existing customers, right? So that 750 number is the number, is the one that, you know, your vendor, your internal sales, marketing people will be laser focused on, right? For, for developing, um, you know, getting those results and the, the getting the KPIs from that. Next, um, what percentage of, uh, oh, excuse me. I think I forgot to hit the arrow button. There we go. Um, okay, so how many new customers would you need in order to achieve that sales goal? So the, the example is, you know, if you have that 750,000 um, as the goal for three years and you divide that by the average annual revenue per, for a new client, um, you know, and so, you know, it, obviously that depends, right? Um, you know, I'm not sure where you are based um, or sort of what your price point is, right? So that's a number that you're gonna need to calculate. Um, but many of the MSPs that, uh, that, are, that are out there um, at least in the United States around this uh, recording of this video, they're charging anywhere between, I'd say 125 per endpoint or per head or per person, um, as high as, well, I've seen some, some super high numbers, 250. Um, but at least the, you know, the majority of ones that, that we work with are in that, uh, I'd say 140, $130 range per person. Um, and you know, the, the average number of seats, that of course ranges as well. Um, but let's say for intents or all intents and purposes that you come up with an annual revenue um, of your average client um, for $30,000 a year, 
um, in, in gross revenue from that new customer. Um, and so in that case, if we do the math on that, so 750,000 divided by uh, 30,000, which would be one customer, um, annual revenue. That means that we need 25, or you would need 25 new clients on average, right? An average clients in order to achieve your uh, your goal in three years. So this is this is great great information and crucial for a sales and marketing uh, department to to have in mind. Um, okay, so next question is. Okay, how many opportunities do we need in order to close um, enough new customers to close, say, those 25 new customers, right? And I, I think it's important for here to distinguish really clearly what we how we define what an opportunity means. So, an opportunity is a lead that me that meets your criteria in terms of the industry, headcount range, location for head HQ. And also, um, you know, they have to be willing to step into your sales process. In other words, they need to go further than just an initial uh, phone appointment, right? They need to agree to sort of a second, you know, a next step after that very first meeting, right? Um, you know, that means that they're actually, uh, you know, stepping into your sales process a little bit more formally and not just tire kicking as, um, as many prospects will do for an initial phone appointment. So to calculate the number of opportunities we need, we need to estimate your average close one ratio at your average close closing conversion, right? So, and the funny thing is, again, when, 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 I, when I have conversations with MSPs um, that are, are kind of new to organic or let's just say sales and marketing, um, they will often say, Derek, you put me in front of a prospect and you just get me in front of them and I'll just, I'll close them, you know, something like, you know, 80% of the time or 50% of the time. And um, unfortunately that, that typically indicates to me that this person is probably, you know, equating referral opportunities to opportunities that are generated or sourced from a sales and marketing engine. Right. They're equating those things. They're saying that opportunity from a referral is pretty much the same thing. And that is a big mistake. The reason it's a mistake is, well, a referral. Right. That typically means two things. One, that opportunity already has a really, really high amount of trust in you, even though they've never spoken to you before. They've already been referred to you by someone that they already trust. It could be a friend of theirs, could be a, a, a colleague or a coworker, who knows, but someone has vouched for your business and your people and what you guys do. And so there's already like, you know, the, the, the trust bar is already full. The bucket is already full. Um, and so that's one, that's one thing. Whereas with an opportunity source from sales and marketing, the, the amount of trust, is typically, you know, it's generally lower than what a referral comes in at generally, right? It depends. You could, you could have established a high amount of trust if uh, in some circumstances, which we'll talk about later in this guide, but by and large, on average, the amount of trust is not necessarily there at the very beginning um, for uh, a, 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 an opportunity source by marketing, right? So that's one key difference. And the other one is the opportunity from a referral, that person in that company, they're really typically only only coming into this if they have, you know, a real business problem, right? So they're really looking to make a decision, um, usually pretty, pretty soon. Uh, and so that's fantastic. That means the timing is just right, right? So it's no surprise that the close, close conversion that you, um, if you're one of those MSPs that says, you know, I have a super high con conversion rate, it's no surprise that you have such a high, you had such a high number as well, because they're actually in the buying cycle. Um, Whereas again, a, an opportunity source from marketing or, or sales engine, you know, there those prospects are not always in the buying cycle. You may have, um, you know, sometimes we generate um, meetings, appointments, right, with very really high quality leads, but they're just not really about to fire the incumbent MSP. They are inquiring 
um, about, you know, they're curious, right? But they're not ready to actually make a change. And so, um, you know, it's a different, it's a different situation. So with all that being said, you know, it's more fair, it's more realistic um, to come up with the, the quantity of opportunities or rather to, 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 I, to say that your close one ratio is closer to industry average. And so that's closer to maybe say one in five or say 20%. Um, and that assumes a lot of things. And, you know, that's, and that, you know, your, your close run, run, your conversion rate may be better. Maybe you, um, but you may, it may also be worse. You know, you may just not have a documented sales process yet. I mean, that is the typically what we're walking into. Um, and so there's going to be work to do to actually get to 20%. Even if you think that you're, that you're, that you're at 80%, with referrals, it doesn't automatically make you a 20% closer for um, for marketing sourced opportunities. There is some work for you to do just to get to the 20%. Um, and, you know, that that is totally, um, you know, something to keep in mind. So, okay, so let's just come back to this hypothetical example. Um, with this example, if we're saying that the we needed 25 new customers and your close rate is gonna be 20%, then that means if we take 25 divided by 20%, um, that means that we would need um, 125 opportunities over the next three years in order to achieve those sales goals. So this is just the beginning of how we take a totally random kind of desire to grow um, and a desire to, yeah, to, to embark on this sales and marketing thing and lead generation, how we start to take some real numbers, conservative but realistic, and we start to work this into a measurable process that is something that um, that we can work with, that a salesperson, marketing team, right, internal or external, can actually build a plan around. So in the next chapter, um, you know, video two, in, in the case of YouTube, we'll, we'll get into um, a little bit more of the, of what does differentiation really mean today? for an MSP, for many MSPs. Um, it's definitely harder than it used to be. Um, and so th I think the, the next video will hopefully be helpful as well as you're thinking about, about that for your MSP. Anyway, thanks for your time and uh, definitely check out uh, chapter two of this MSP lead generation guide for 2023. Thanks.